Hey guys, I'm back and I have here a Wham Bam flexible build system and I'm going to be telling you all about it. There's been some nice changes. They, uh, they liked the feedback I gave them. Uh, they sent me two betas to try out. Uh, they sent me one for the Ultimaker 2 Plus and one for the Ultimaker S5. I have a bunch of those at work. So I'm going to go through and tell you what they've changed from their previous version, how it goes together and what I think of it. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back. First of all, this is my channel where nerdy is cool. My name is Paul. I'm into 3D printing, cosplay, all that good stuff. If you've never seen my stuff before, I invite you to check out my videos, watch this one to the end, and of course, become a subscriber. Hit the button down below. So with me is a Wham Bam bed system right here. And as I mentioned in the intro, they sent me a beta. Uh, they made a limited run here after some feedback from users like myself that had pointed out that this first version here, if you have an Ultimaker 2, Ultimaker S5, Ultimaker 3, uh, you know that essentially what happens is on your Ultimakers, you have bed clips. So what happens is the bed clips uh, go around to the you know front here and with the this first version of the bed, uh, these prongs here were, well, what would happen was if you would try to lay this on top, uh, it would be pushed upward because it would be laying on top of the clips. Now, what I had done the first time around to get around this issue is instead of using the glass bed, I took the glass bed off and I adhered the magnetic sheet directly to the heated bed. And I demonstrated that in one of my videos previously. And then what I did is, you know, I just put the wham bam surface on top of that magnet after it had cured for 48 hours. And the one thing that I noticed is that because of the height of the bed and where it goes inside the printer, uh, without having that glass bed that was extra couple of millimeters, in order to get the proper, you know, nozzle to bed clearance, uh, in the case of the Ultimakers, uh, without the glass bed, you're kind of at the top of the travel of those springs. So what would happen is you would be watching your print go on and you would notice it'd be a little bit bouncy because you have those springs at nearly their full travel. And overall, it, I didn't have too many issues with it, but I did have some failures because of it. So I contacted the folks over at Wham Bam Bed System and said, you know, if you could make this with the cutouts to accommodate the clips and to accommodate the glass bed, this would be a winner. They said, can you take some measurements? We'll, we'll send you some information. And I did. So I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that they wanted my feedback. So they took it. So what they did is they sent me over these new beds and I have one at work and I have one here on my Ultimaker 2 Plus. And the process, first of all, was to get the magnet <laughs> off the heated bed, which surprisingly came off very easy. And then as I'll walk through here, uh, we'll do the install. And what I did just to be extra good, uh, I still have my old bed, but I decided, you know what? That printer probably deserves a new glass bed. So I reached out to Fabricate and uh, purchased a new glass bed uh, from my Ultimaker 2 Plus and put the magnet on there and did the full install. And I'll show you that now. Okay, it's editing voice Paul and this is the wham bam. This is the uh, magnetic bed and uh, there is the uh, PEX with the uh, spring steel bed and we're going through and also there is the glass bed I received from Fabricate. So what I'm doing right now is before we're doing anything, we're just sizing everything up. Make sure that that magnet is going to fit the glass bed. And we're good there. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the surface before we adhere the magnetic bed is clean, no human oils, anything. So happen to use some 70% uh, IPA right there and a little blob in the middle. And I am using a microfiber cloth, trying to prevent any cat hair, lint or whatever from floating up on there. And then once I got all the IPA off, I'm just flipping that towel around and trying to dry it off just to make sure all is well. Okay, so the fun part here, what you want to do, and of course, this always happens the day after you cut your fingernails. You're trying to peel that paper backing away from the adhesive. 
what they suggest and what I've seen in other videos is you wanna get like the first inch or so and just fold that over. And then what you wanna do is you wanna, so there it is folded back. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're just kind of sliding things around. And of course with the fold of the uh, backing there, you can kind of lay it down as I'm doing here. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm flush with the front, the sides, and then once I'm confident everything is looking good from the center on out, we're trying to make sure we don't have any air bubbles in there. And once we do the first inch or so, peel back some more and rinse and repeat. And there we go, it's all on. And then after this, what I did just, I was kind of curious, I wanted to see if I had any air bubbles going on in the back or whatever, and uh, after a quick look, everything looks pretty good. And when I'm confident, I don't have to do, sometimes you gotta take a razor blade, do some trimming, but in this case, everything was perfect. And there we go, thumbs up. Okay, 48 hours later, or in this case, I'm redoing this to demonstrate on video, so you'll notice that my Wham Bam surface is, is pretty worn, done a lot of printing. But look right here, so you can see that the uh, we were clearing the clips just fine, and the back as well too. So good, perfect fit. Next process is, if you have an Ultimaker 2 or 2 Plus, you're used to this. This is the whole build plate leveling process. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the bed up and go through the interactive menu. Now the first thing you can see, the springs aren't too terrible, but what we wanna do is we wanna make that better. So we're gonna crank those down. I'm quickly grabbing like a USB drive and kind of eyeballing how low should I make this. So we'll crank that one down, the other one. and then the rear one. Okay, so via the menu, it tells us to crank that up until we're like one millimeter away. So that's what I'm doing. And previously, you know, without that glass bed, there was a lot tougher to do that because <laughs> you just ran out of spring. I'm using a feeler gauge. I like the feeler gauge better than the paper because there's so many different thicknesses of paper or index cards or whatever. So feeler gauge works very well for me. I believe it's a 0.02 is the one I'm using there or a 0.2, can't recall. But uh, whichever one you use, I usually use the thinnest one I can find. And we've already gone through the first sweep and made everything level. And the Ultimaker has you do it one more time. Making sure that that moves with a little bit of friction. Okay, and the process is complete. We're ready to go. And for those of you with an Ultimaker S5, this is what it looks like when it's all done. Uh, I didn't get a video of the whole leveling process, but pretty much the exact same thing. For the Ultimaker 2, you know, the bed leveling is at three point leveling. So, you know, your first layer, of course, you're gonna be adjusting those knobs to make sure your first layer is perfect. 
Uh, one thing I will recommend if you have an Ultimaker S5 or if you have the Ultimaker S3, uh, what I have found with the S5s at work is sometimes uh, as it does its auto probing and does that first layer, sometimes it can be a little bit too close. So in Cura, you can check off, you know, you can add a Z offset and that's fairly easy to do. I know for some of the prints I did, I want to say we added like a 0 0.10 Z offset just so it was up just a tad so we weren't squishing too low. So sounds fantastic, right? Where do you get it? Well, I have an affiliate link down below. The proceeds support the channel. And they have also offered a uh, discount code. So if you use where nerdy is cool 2022, and that is spelled out W-N-I-C-2022, that will save you 10% off your order. So, hey, there you go. You have a little enticement to go check it out. Okay, so that's it for this time. If you like this video and you want to help support my channel, be sure to hit the super like if you'd like to do that. I appreciate whatever support you wish to offer. And if you want to see what I'm up to, I'm very active on social media. Over here on the listing here is Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course the website where nerdyiscool.com is where all the videos are at. I look forward to your comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. I read the comments. Sometimes I reply. <laughs> and that's it for this time. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool.